الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين One of the best things that I read it says إذا جاءك مهموم فأنصت If someone stressed out worried has a problem came to you listen listen to him maybe just listening to him relieves him وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ سَائِلْ فَأَنْفِقْ if someone comes asking you for help begging you for money I have a hospital bill I have a a problem, I have a need, I have rent, I have food, or I need some, whatever. Anfiq, spend, give from that you have, because that's what it's for. To spend it, not to save it. وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ مُعْتَذِرْ فَاصْفَحْ If someone coming to you, asking you to forgive them they have done something they have said something about you they have harmed you in any way and they come to you and they say please forgive me forgive them because how many times you say oh Allah forgive me Allah did ever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say no I'm not gonna forgive you anymore no so you do the same you try to forgive as much as you can. So if someone comes, has a problem, listen to them. Don't say, oh, everybody has a problem. I don't have time to listen to this. I am complaining all the time. No, if someone comes, listen. Wallahi, you have no idea how much relief you give a person for listening. Some people, they are not looking for help. They're just looking for someone to listen to them. And the same thing for health, money, Muslim or non-Muslim. When someone comes to you for a need, know for sure that you are better than them. And that's why they are coming to ask you. That means you are blessed more than them. And the pay for being blessed is to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way to thank him is to spend from that which he gave you. And when someone comes and asks you to forgive them, forgive them because you make mistakes and you say wrong things and you hurt the feelings of other people and you need forgiveness on top of that, the sins. If you have sins and you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he always forgives you. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, when someone, watch this, accused his daughter with adultery, accused her, there is no bigger sin than that. And she is the wife of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What did he do? He used to spend money on that. He used, it's like he was his guardian. He said, no more. How can I spend on someone who's saying this much or this bad about my daughter and about the wife of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed an ayah for that, telling him forgive, commanding every one of us Forgive and let it go. Don't you like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you? Meaning that he did something wrong. He got punished for it. You do a lot of wrong and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you, why don't you forgive? You know what Abu Bakr Siddiq did? Radiallahu an. He reinstated the help. Let's say he was giving him a thousand dollars a month. He doubled it. He start giving $2,000 a month simply because it touched him because he knows how badly he needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, so he did that. And look at the saying. لَيْسَ مِنَ الضَّرُورِ أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي جَيْبِكَ مُصْحَبْ وَلَكِنْ لِيَكُنْ فِي أَخْلَاقِكَ آيَةٌ 
It's not important if you have a mushaf in your pocket or a mushaf in your heart. What's important is to have one ayah understood and applied. I think I need to repeat that. We're not looking for people carrying mushaf or memorizing a mushaf. We need people who have one ayah and applying that ayah. Because the Quran is revealed to act upon. So not just memorize and read. So this is the benefit that we get. Many of us focus, like one person the other day, he was saying about someone, he's so knowledgeable, but he said he makes mistakes in the Quran. I said, SubhanAllah. So someone applying the Quran, but he doesn't read it as good as someone who reads it fluently versus someone knows the Quran and doesn't have no idea what's in there. You compare the two together, definitely the one who applies the Quran is better than the one who memorizes the Quran. Definitely, because the Quran's purpose is to put it in your life. What's the description of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Can a Quran yamshi al ard He was a walking Quran. Have you ever seen a walking Quran? Yes, human being acting up with the Quran. Whatever the Quran says they do it, it's like a walking Quran. That's what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wasn't described, oh, he knows the Quran and no mistakes. Oh, he memorizes all the Quran. No, he was a walking Quran. That's why the majority of the Muslims accepted Islam, not because of anything but manners. They watch people. They buy and sell with people. When they promise, they fulfill the promise. When they give, they give fair. When they fight, they fight fair. When someone wants to return something, they take it back. They're easy going. They're dealing with people so good. It's like, why, why are you doing all this? Oh, because I'm Muslim. Because this is my religion. My religion tells me to do that. And people, what is your religion? Oh, akhlaq leads to questions. Questions leads to answers. Answers saves people from hell to heaven. So don't belittle akhlaq because akhlaq comes from religion. It's not the other way around. If you have good manners, generally it comes from your religion. If you know your religion, you have no good manners, that means you don't apply your religion. There's no goodness in your religion. If you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and he is the beautiful and he is the forgiven and he is and he is and he is and you got none of that stuff. What kind of tawheed is this? You see, we need to really think about what we're doing. Look at yourself when I'm talking and you're smiling, for instance. There is no reason for it to smile. Or laughing or talking to someone else or not paying attention or looking at me but your mind is somewhere else. We need to really take it serious, just like what the brother was saying. These are moments you cherish, you should cherish. Tomorrow you're gonna remember it and you're gonna reflect on it, I guarantee you, you will. You're gonna say that we used to sit and we used to listen and we used to think and we used to play and we wish we didn't. Take it from someone who's been there. We're older than you. Everything we tell you, we heard it, or we did it ourselves. So make sure that you take it seriously. Force yourself. I know you want to talk, and I know you want to laugh, and I know you have so many things, but that is how you seek knowledge. You force yourself to do that, and then you find yourself, it becomes so easy for you to sit. I know some people, when you, when you talk, they, they, they're just like this. They're pinned. They cannot even... Look aside. That's how you train yourself, and that's how Prophet Muhammad was. When someone talks to him, he would not interrupt like this thing here. He would not interrupt the person until the person is finished. And in fact, when someone came 
to tell him all the negative things about you. If you are crazy, we have someone to heal you. If you need money, we got so much cash to give you. If you want to get married, we'll find you the most beautiful woman. If, 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 all of that, Prophet Muhammad was not asking that. And he was listening to him, not interrupting anything. When he finished, he told him, are you done? He said, yes. He said, I listen to you, listen to me. Look at how fair. Look how attentiveness and how fairness is with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And guess what? Did you think he answered his questions? He just recited Quran for him. And the other one begged him, please stop. He couldn't take it anymore because it's so scary. Because he said, فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا فَقَدْ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً مِثْلَ صَاعِقَةِ عَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ if you turn away from this message, I'm warning you from a strike like the strike that hit the people of Prophet uh, Hud and the people of Prophet Saleh. They understand. So manners, manners, be attentive, listen, forgive, help, and pray. Our brother is in need for you. And he's not only in need for you, I'm in need for you, but he is more in need. When someone asks you for help, dua is the least that you can do. How long did it take me to pray, to make dua? Long. You know what? The longer you stay, the more sincere you become. Try it. Most of us, they go, oh Allah, give me, oh Allah, give me, oh Allah, give me, and then up. You, you did not really warm up. This is like someone wants to go play a game and he throw three shots and he goes, let's go, or I prayed. No, but when you take it longer, you start connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you become more sincere. So if you need dua, take long sujood. Get all the blood coming to your brain, you start thinking. And you start feeling it, and it feels good. Honestly, honestly, how many of you felt good after that long sujood? We got one, two, well, see? Wallahi, I'm not joking. Wallahi, it's a different feeling when you have, it's like, you, you, you recharge yourself, subhanAllah. Good feeling for the dua, and good feeling even, uh, physical feeling for the body.